One of my favorite places to visit is Longenecker Gardens at the UW-Madison Arboretum. If you're looking for a place to, to learn more about trees, shrubs, whether they're maples, lilacs, it doesn't matter, this is the place to visit. I'm with the curator and emeritus professor of horticulture, Ed Hasselkus, and, and Ed, I think people forget that you can come here for more than just the lilacs or the crab apples. There are wonderful things to visit and see here. We have Wisconsin's premier collection of trees and shrubs over 2,500 kinds. Well, and see, I think it, that's wonderful. It's kind of, you know, we're, it's an unsung hero of the garden. Yeah, and the, you want to come here to see the newest and best, those that have been trialed and proven for our conditions. Well, and you're the one that has been trialing them and provening them, if that's a word, <laughs> for a very long time. I think 43 years, Shelley. Okay, that's, uh, that's quite a, so you've, right. you've seen some of these uh, grow up almost to their maturity then? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and you've got some favorite collections here, too. We have one of the biggest collections of lilacs in the country, and we're here today when they're in full glorious bloom. Well, and 2010 is a special year for Longenecker, too, isn't it? Yes, 75th anniversary. Wow. Which, uh, and lilacs were the first planted. So some of these, not this one, but some of these are 75 years old. Yes, yes. Well, what about this one right here? I mean, it's beautiful. This is an introduction by the U.S. National Arboretum called Donaldii in honor of Donald E. Goff, who bred these lilacs and other shrubs at the National Arboretum. So here's one that not only has gorgeous and fragrant flowers, but also uh, oh, orange yes, to maroon fall color. Fall which color. Which is not common in lilacs generally. So you get more than one season of interest, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. And it yes. smells wonderful. Yes. Well, there's another collection that you're particularly proud of. I've worked on ornamental crab apples throughout my entire career. We have what we consider to be the most up-to-date collection in the world. Well, then let's I think look we, at them. Yeah, let's take a look. The 35-acre Longenecker Horticultural Gardens got its start in 1935 by Professor G. William Longenecker. He was actually the first director of the University of Wisconsin Arboretum. Oh, wow, okay. He was a landscape architect who had real skill in laying out uh, plants like we see here today. Definitely. So the, the gardens, they're just called the horticultural gardens originally, were dedicated as the G. William Longenecker Horticultural Gardens in 1967. I took over from him as curator in 1966. Wow. So uh, in this great long history, it's just been the two of us uh, as curators of this wonderful collection. Well, and, and it is truly a beautiful garden. It's truly Thank a wonderful you. place. Now, we are in, again, one of my favorite spots, the, the crab apples. I mean, you can just wander through here and get lost and enjoy yourself. But this is one of your new one favorites? Yes. <laughs> well, there are about 175 in the collection. Wow. You remember, I wanted to keep right up to date with the newest and best. This one's called Pink Sparkles. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, very <laughs> few crabs have this wonderful rose pink flower color. And well, the, the petals are almost striped. Look at that. Uh, and it also has, which remember we've talked about years past, be, uh, highly persistent, tiny, bright red fruits. There are few still here and a year fact, later. Those are important because people always worry about them falling on the ground and getting icky. That's right. So uh, Tiny, bite-sized to birds. Right. Um, this one also is importantly totally resistant to, uh, to the apple scab disease. Which is as, very important in Wisconsin. It has two important uh, parents, prairie fire and red jewel. Well, it's because of your influence I have prairie fire in my yard, and the minute I planted it, the cedar waxwing birds showed up and started eating the fruit. So if you have to have a tree in your yard, it has to be a crab apple. Well, crabs in the Midwest are the most important small-scale landscape tree. Definitely. Now, is this something I can find easily, or you, this is fairly it's new so for you? It's so new so that uh, it's going to take a while before it is commonly available. But again, we're concentrating here on the very newest and best. And I think you're doing a very good job of it. This is fantastic. Now, you have another area that's kind of near and dear to your heart. Well, I've been active in the American Conifer Society, and we really have a great collection of conifers, which I would like to show you. Let's go look. Ed, what does pinetum mean? We re usually use the term pinetum uh, to refer to collections of conifers. 
plants okay. that are basically in the pine family. Okay, so this is a pinetum. Yes, and so here we have the full array of different kinds of, of conifers. In the center, we have the low-growing junipers in the foreground, mm -hmm. working up behind the bench to upright tree-like junipers. On the left over here, we have pines, starting with the low-growing mugo pines in the foreground, up to the full-grown uh, white pines in the background. And then over here to the right, we have a collection of spruces, uh, much more formal in appearance, and notice with the, the color combinations here. Very blue right. and the spruces. Then the golds and the yellows in the middle. Yes, and then the textures. Typically, uh, the pines have the, the coarsest textured uh, habit. Kind of soft. Uh, yes, and notice how they sway in the wind. Yeah. Uh, the juniper is much more finely textured. It's, you know, if, we, if we're buying plants in the nursery, we're always seeing things at a small size. So if we're really trying to find out how evergreens look for winter interest, this is the place to come. I mean, we can see the size, we can see how they look at maturity. I mean, this is fantastic for winter interest. Well, we have uh, full-scale conifers here, of course, but we have what we like to call garden conifers, those that are smaller scale that are appropriate for many uh, residential landscapes. And everything's labeled here. Everything has a label. The scientific name, the common name, uh, the year it was acquired, and sometimes they're uh, designated as a memorial to a person. Oh, that's neat. Well, and I think the bench up there looks very exciting. That bench is almost always occupied. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think the longer you stay here, you know, that might be your bench, Ed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ed, thank you so much. This is such a wonderful place to visit, and you've done such such a wonderful job. Thank you for sharing Pleasure it with to everybody. Pleasure to have you here. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks.